know how hard Superstorm Sandy hit our shores here in Connecticut. As a result, a lot of people had to leave their homes, and that meant that a lot of pet owners are sometimes forced to decide if they could take their animals with them. Sometimes you forget your pet when you're thinking about preparing for storms, but I think we've seen recently that it's something that you do have to think about. Two of our very favorite guests are joining us today from Barkbusters, Vicki and Richard Horowitz. Great to have you here. This used to be kind of, an, kind of an abstract discussion that we're having here, but then came Sandy. Before that was Irene. Just last week uh, over on Long Island, not 50 the miles flooding. from where we're standing right. here, 13 inches of rain fell in, uh, in, in a matter of hours right. and, and flooding out homes there. So it's, it's very real. And so people, I think, uh, will pay extra special attention to, to uh, what you all have to say today. And the first thing we want to talk about is, uh, is uh, to, to, get, uh, to think about where your pet could go if the worst happens. If you have to evacuate your home, a lot of shelters do not take pets. So you want to plan ahead. You want to do some research, find out where you can bring your pets if you have to evacuate. That would be devastating to go to a shelter with a family pet and have the pet turned away. I but, mean, what do you do? And it do? happens. It yeah, happens. What do you do in that situation? So you, we recommend go on Google, search for pet-friendly hotels mm -hmm. in the area mm -hmm. so that you know exactly where you need to go. Unless or, you have family members who are able to take you in mm -hmm. and who allow you to bring their, your pets with, me, with you. But the important thing is preparation. If you do this the morning of the storm, you're probably not going to get anywhere. That's correct. But if you do it ahead of time, so much of what you guys talk about has to do with uh, getting ready ahead of time. Assembling an emergency kit. We do it for ourselves and for our kids, but you say it's just as important to do it for the pets. You get a plastic box so that if it ever got wet, everything inside would be protected. But, you know, keep things like um, cleaners, um, some Types food. of food, medical supplies, any kind of medical things, uh, medicines, flashlights, water. Uh, food bowl. You want to make sure you have water and food for at least a few days. Mm -hmm. Even having a flashlight, uh, making your dog feel comfortable by having some dog appropriate toys, toys yeah. they like to play with that will keep them um, occupied. Um, and you also want to make sure that you have, you take care of their needs by making sure that you have collars, leashes with you, that they have had all their vaccinations, yeah. that you have all that information you even, with you. And you take it a step further. You say get copies of, this is your late uh, dog yes. you had for 17 years right here. You say take the medical records. Absolutely. Uh, Make a copy you. of the medical records so that if there's a question about your dog or cat, you have the records with you. Take a picture so that if you do get separated, you can identify your dog or provide information to authorities about your, your pet. And important to note that you say not just a picture of the pet, but a picture of you with the pet, so that if there's any question later on, if it's really yours, you do have right. some, some, some virtual proof yes. right there. Once again, the key to all this is preparation. You can't do this the morning of. you got to do this and just keep it handy. Like just you like would we would for, for ourselves. Of, well, Absolutely. like for the rest of the family. Okay, during the emergency itself, you've been here before to talk about how, how dogs hate thunder. Imagine their, 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 their panic when a full-fledged tropical storm is, is, is coming down on them. Right. How do you handle it while it's happening? All right, so during the emergency, if you're allowed to stay in your home, and they tell you to go to a lower surface in a, in a basement of your house, you take your dog with you. You take him with you, you put him, provide a, cr a crate or a place that he can kennel himself. You keep him on leash that will keep him more comfortable and safe. Um, and you just want to make sure you're very calm. The problem that we have is our dogs, um, we have to communicate with them like dogs, not people. With a child, you'd say, oh, it's okay, it's okay. But with a dog, you have to stay calm and be as relaxed as you can. The calmer you are, the dogs will feed off of your emotions and they will be calm during an emergency. You, you guys, you just think of everything. We try. I'm always so impressed. Uh, and, and as we take a look at the, uh, the, the things here, I just, I just want to ask you in general, what, you have such a deep love for pets that is shared uh, by you as a couple and that you give to the world. Where, where did this come from? How, how did you, where did this love of, of, of dogs particularly come from? Oh. Well, we've owned dogs for 37 years, yeah. and, we've, and we've always loved animals. But my husband and I are both just people, are very loving, people caring people, and we're them. very caring. And so we want to make sure our clients can enjoy and love their pets. And the most important thing is you have to have the tools to be a responsible dog owner, and yeah. that's what we provide to our owners. All right. Well, it's always great to have you here.